My name is Michael. The talk title again is Help Me Help You Hurt Yourself. This talk was created by just some observations and things seen in the field. Again, just a quick disclosure. It's been taken from various companies and various items that I've seen with regards to testing, both on the client and on the tester side. Again, the statements made are mine and uh, not necessarily my employers. I love my job. I really enjoy testing for SecureWorks. And other than that, I mumble a lot and technically kind of get lost sometimes. So if I look like a deer in headlights, just toss on some comments on Discord and I'll try to uh, focus. A little bit about myself. Um, my name is Michael. I go by the handle Vega. Uh, when I do testing, uh, I like stars, something about myself. My Twitter is the handle data class, uh, just because I like a musician. Again, past experiences, I uh, worked for an antivirus company. Did some DOD contracting, did some adversarial medical device testing, and now I currently work at SecureWorks doing NetPan, uh, AppSec, uh, web services, red team stuff, and basically anything else I can kind of research and test and that we get assigned to. So you may ask yourself why and why this uh, test may or talk may be pertinent. Again, it's field level observations that I've seen. These are things that can both improve the quality of life and the quality of tests for both us, testers, and clients. And again, both testers and clients can benefit from clear and effective communication. And a lot of these examples, uh, again, are just examples of items where communication may have broken down. And due to that, money was wasted and necessarily efforts as well. Uh, me, myself, I actually like my clients. I want their infrastructures to be well. I want them to be stronger after the test. And I would like them to actually take action against the findings that I actually have presented with. As testers, sometimes you may find that the more pain that you inflict on a report, again, at the end, the stronger that client will be because a malicious actor is not going to be doing that to their business. Instead, it's going to be me in a very controlled environment reporting in real time what may be occurring. The hope is that the clients will have everything to go prior to the start of the test. Again, so when we go ahead and start testing, we can go ahead and hit the environment that's ready and, again, ready for our objectives, which, again, is to test them. Us as penetration testers, we get put into some interesting scenarios. Clients would like to sometimes have huge scope nationwide, nation-state attack simulation going against like multiple targets in one week's time, which, again, can get kind of interesting given the scope that sometimes some people provide. They expect us to be wizards, again, in our test, and a lot of times we do show ample amounts of wizardry. Or wizardry. However, again, in some cases, with 10,000 IP addresses and possibilities, and you don't even know what you have within that 10,000 IP address range, it can get kind of interesting. Again, this will break, go down into the communication area in a moment, but again, also as testers, we encounter a numerous amount of technologies, and we have to basically adapt and attack those. Again, what would happen if you affected communi or communicated effectively as a client? Sorry, these slides are tripping me up because I didn't have words on them. They were all just pictures before at B-Side San Diego. Clients themselves, they'll save time and money. Again, with tests, uh, these things go under a certain time frame. So if you don't have communication going in a clear, effective channel necessarily before your test or during it, Basically, they are just going to take that money and invalidate the test and kind of burn it up in the air. In the end, if you have effective communication in the initial intake and during scoping and basically throughout your engagement, you're going to have better results. The reason being is that it's better to work together uh, with a developer, again, from an attack point of view, if you have questions, like, say, to validate a finding. Again, this is going to be able to test items, again, with development. If you have that open communication with the development channel, and then actually get a POC exploit going versus somebody who may just randomly read like uh, JavaScript pages and like understand, like understand JavaScript better than you in like an hour's time. In the end, we'll all be happier during testing times and we won't have to bug you for any kind of missing info that you may have left off during the initial scoping meetings. Testers, I think, are also vulnerable to the same lack of communication. You as a tester will have better tests. Again, if you have effective communication on your scoping and on your intake and on your actual testing timeline with your client. If you're basically, if you ask the correct questions and you get enough information, you'll have an exact roadmap of what's going to be encountered during a test. That doesn't go for some tests that are supposed to be black box, but necessarily when you're working with your client, you want to make sure that you get an ample amount of information. You're going to be able to do more with less time. 
and you're going to be effective in that time frame that you have. And also, again, as referenced before, if you work together with development, possibly on a test, you may actually get fuller findings than if you didn't. Basically, you can turn a POC or just I think that it does this into an actual like this will actually exploit some. Clear communication. What does it help prevent? In the end, it will help prevent copious amount of disasters. In a test at a specific place, basically, the client internally was receiving information that, you know, their application was ready, but their developers were being somewhat shady. They were replying with screenshots versus logins to the application. They were telling the app owner, basically, this is how it runs not really doing any kind of demonstrations. And this is all internal communications. So in the end, I'm having to feel this through, again, my client, and he's having to contact his developers. I had a $20 bet that there actually was an application on this test that we were just going to be testing against screenshots. Again, as noted, I got $10 of those, 10 of those $20 back. In the end, again, the app was not ready. It was built basically in half the time it was needed to, but Again, UI elements, everything was all over the board, and it did have a lot of critical findings that were associated with it. Also, pages were changing in real time. So literally code was being added as I was testing. So I would go to one page, get a cross-site scripting or other exploit going, and then the next day I would return to the page and it was gone or rewritten. So again, due to the additions of code and after the fact and the changing of many elements, the test was invalidated because, again, the code that was there during the testing timeline was basically changed during the testing timeline. So we were hitting moving target. This was all due to the lack of communication on the client side with his development team actually getting a clear answer back. Sometimes we've also been there where we will send an email out and not necessarily get a response back from somebody. This has happened in many a test. One happened to me last week where I requested a bit of email about a user who needed to test a specific function of a website. I got that email back. However, it was about a week late because I had already gotten the report generated. And basically in the report, there was a lot of bold stating that we could not necessarily test this function because the business failed to reply to multiple emails and Skype messages and other things, trying to get in contact with them to be able to try to test this particular function. Again, in the end, due to lack of communication during that time frame, money was basically just burnt and thrown away. There's also the case in which case necessarily were viewed as an enemy, us testers, which is kind of interesting considering that we were initially hired by the business to benefit them. Sometimes, and in this particular example, it basically during a test I was engaged in, we were had a lack of communication from the administrators. The administrator would not reply back and we would never receive anything. And basically, in short, we were told to stick to our scope. And again, the questions and emails that I was sending out in multiple times and then going over his head to his management team, again, who would refer them to that admin answer, again, were in pertinence to the scope. But during that test, because those questions went unanswered, I stuck to my scope and I was able to get domain administrator and I recovered, again, a lot of useful information, passports, driver's licenses, visas, credit cards and the like. And it was a mess because some of the countries where the passports and the visas and everything were gathered from, they don't necessarily like to have that information put in a report. Effective communication during this time frame would have basically resulted in a, okay, well, we can redact or like, you know, I do redact a lot of information, but we can take off even more information and just say that we had this in the report. But again, because the client did not reply back, all of that got put into the report again for them to see, because I like to be verbose my reports. I really would like you to see what I have gotten in these kinds of things. And so that really caused an issue. But again, it was due to the lack of communication and that view that we were a threat against, I guess, his job necessarily, even though I'm trying to help them get as strong as they can security wise. But that lack of communication, again, caused another issue that could have been avoided had we actually had that open line of communication during our, our time, testing timeline. Lack of communication will only affect the person that is really lacking the communication portion because you're either going to hurt yourself as a business or you're not going to help yourself as a tester. And again, we can work together as testers and clients and clients and testers. It is allowed. We are actually allowed to do cool things, and so we should. So we should be stronger, better, and faster, and more productive. And again, if you don't communicate clearly, uh, you may lose a lot of money.
Going on the tester side, a lack of communication I've seen is interesting, or at least, again, according to well, that I've observed as part of the tester, not ethos, but archetype, is one time I was talking to my friend, and he is a tester, but necessarily he likes to go at everything like as, as the blackest of boxes. So he doesn't want to really get scoped information. He kind of just wants to get an IP range and not ask questions and then just hit it. Well, in his last test, he was going against, again, tests in North America. Well, his test targets are in Asia Pacific. He's in North America, but necessarily his line of sight is just a line of sight. There are ways for them to hit those boxes, but not necessarily enough information that was gathered during the scoping to be able to actually effectively target those machines. So due to that, due to a lack of engagement during the scoping and due to a lack of information gathering and basically just shut down a communication on the tester side, he was unable to achieve the goals that he was supposed to. So again, everything doesn't have to be the blackest of boxes. Uh, me, myself, I came into a test a couple of weeks ago. Again, it was a massive external facing test. One week was just used to map out the actual nodes that were in that infrastructure. And day 13 or 14, we actually were able to successfully get in to the infrastructure. And again, due to this, we now have a new scope, new set of clients and new targets to assess and new kind of things to find and add to the report. In such a shortened time frame, again, we want to make sure that we hit all the high notes on that, asking the client, you know, effectively, where are your crown jewels? You know, what keeps you up at night? So we asked them and, you know, they replied back and we were able to get a good test out of that because we asked them as a shortened timeline, you know, what would an attacker want to target in this infrastructure if they were able to get in, which we did. And you know, we did that. So, again, one more thing, because I know we're running short on time. Again, we can create beautiful things together. In DEF CON 27, located a public finding in one of their medical devices. Again, communication started off great, but quickly faltered on the client side. I was asking all the right questions. I was trying to get information out of the client and trying to learn more information about the issue, the background of the actual widget that I was able to do the thing on. And necessarily, due to the classification of this device, we could have actually created policy on how to test these devices in the future. Instead, that didn't happen. So necessarily, I had to let the mediation take over. And then a new CDE was added because of that. But again, we could have also created policies that went along to go with an example of what you would do in a scenario of if somebody brought a beta device to DEF CON to test. That, that was just wasted. So basically, we just wasted a lot of months just trying to get standard finding out that should have really taken a little bit of time, but again, since communication broke down, we couldn't really work together. We had to go through a third party and it just extended the timelines of everything. One keynote is that, again, you really don't want to be kind of like mean or just, you know, abrasive to your clients and also likewise to your testers. Uh, you really don't know who is going to be your coworker in the future. Again, due to that, be nice, be open and be communicative. If somebody asks you a question, again, just be honest and be simple and be direct very simple and again effective communications in the testing scenarios that i've seen can really help stem a lot of money waste and time waste on the tester side and last we'll go messing with your tester it has a cvss of 11 that's my friend's son willis again shout out to willis because again this is like the face that you would see when i tell somebody that man this guy's just like he's really kind of messing with me because i don't know why and again it goes back to that prior example maybe they just don't like us because of like what we do Testers are people and they have emotions. In the various companies that I work for, I've seen a lot of things and a lot of acrobatics due to the tester feeling jilted or like they were like saying, man, this guy's just like totally like sending me off on a wild goose chase or like X, Y, and Z. But again, they have, ta they have talent and they have goals and they have objectives. But again, sometimes they also don't have lives and like things that they do outside of these things. Again, just play nice on the playground and I think everybody will have a better time. This goes out to just being a better communicator and not being fairly so abrasive in communications.